Hello and welcome to This Week in Astrology with your friend Gretchen Heidel, full-time astrologer, life coach, Reiki master, and so much more. And I am here tonight going over uh, This Week in Astrology. This is the week of Labor Day. I did take off Monday night, our usual live broadcast, and I'm doing this pre-recorded version for YouTube. So welcome, welcome if you're just joining me uh, uh, tonight on this broadcast, if it's your very first time, and if you're reoccurring and you've been here before. Thank you so much. You guys are amazing. Um, and I love to go over this week in astrology. Uh, this is the week of Labor Day, September 4th, 2023, going through until September 10th of 2023. Um, and I have a few big things to go over this week. It's not like super packed with busyness, but there's a lot of things going on as far as like the, you know, some bigger transits. Uh, but in general, I want to say this, this month uh, in September of 2023, my little dog is walking behind me right now. So don't think it was a ghosty that just made the um, <laughs> the chimes go. Um, but uh, this month in September of 2023, astrologically speaking, is actually kind of a little bit more quiet than um, some other months and other times that I've been uh, on this broadcast for sure. There was a lot going on. And that in itself might actually be a little bit of a problem because we have seven planets retrograde right now and things are a little bit quiet and things are kind of like slow and sort of sticky. That's kind of the energy that I would describe because there's not much things moving and shaking and, and activated like last month in August. Uh, yes, there was a ton of retrograde planets, but a lot of stuff was happening. Now it's like a lot of stuff happened and then we're just kind of sitting with it a little bit. Um, and that in itself is, is like I said, like a little slow, a little sticky. I'm even starting to see clients, um, in my private sessions, my personalized astrological sessions. If you ever are interested in that, uh, definitely feel free to send me a text message or check out my website, GretchenHeidel.com. It has a lot of information on there about my services and whatever, but I'm seeing people coming to me saying, I feel stuck. I feel like nothing's going on. I feel like I should be doing something, but I'm not. And what am I missing? And and so I'm hearing a lot of things like that. Now you might say, well, I'm, I'm still pretty busy, Gretchen. And that's fine. I mean, there is still some activity, but but some of the activity is starting to slow down. And it's like, it's like we made so much headway and we were doing all this stuff. And then it's like, we're kind of, you know. So one of the culprits, well, first of all, I should start with good news. Um, on this weekend, on, uh, last week, I went over this in the broadcast a little bit, but Venus retrograde is no longer retrograde. So that was good news on September 3rd, 2023, Venus was retrograde all the way from July until now. Uh, it finally went direct and that's good news. Okay. So we have one more planet that's off the books there. That's no longer retrograde. It is going through Leo. Now here's the thing. It has to go all the way back, okay? Because remember, um, it appears that way in the sky to go all the way back to the very beginning of Leo. And now it's got to go all the way back through again. That's why these retrogrades, whenever something is in uh, a sign for a really long time, it's like we're getting practice and repractice and practice again. And oh, let's review that one more time and go through. And that's why we're doing that. So Venus is now direct and that happened on Sunday, September 3rd. And that was at 920 PM Eastern time that it went direct. So it's not really move. I mean, um, at the time of this broadcast, it's not really moving yet forward. Um, it, it's moving, but it's very slow. Um, and so we want to give it a little bit more time to kind of get, you know, <laughs> up back and running again. Um, but we were reviewing all almost all summer relationships, love and finance. I mean, that's been going on all summer long. And so hopefully you use this time wisely and you were able to think about those topics and review things in your personal relations with others. It doesn't have to be a love relationship, though a lot of times Venus retrograde for sure is love. Um, but sometimes it's love of a friend or love of a parent or something like that. It can be any kind of close personal relation uh, with somebody else where we were reviewing all of that. And so hopefully you learned those lessons and whatever you learned and we're still continuing. Now we're like in the finishing phase, the final phase where it goes forward. 
we're, we're doing more of like an integration of those lessons and we're starting to pull that into our, you know, life experience. And, and yeah, and Leo is, you know, all about feeling special. Am I feeling special or not? You know? Um, and, uh, so there's that. So, uh, that's the good news, but then there's other news, uh, where Jupiter now went retrograde the next day. So that happened actually on Labor Day here in the United States on Monday. Um, that was at 10, 10 a.m. Eastern time. Jupiter went retrograde in Taurus on uh, September 4th, 2023. And again, if you're out on the West Coast, it, it was 7, 10 a.m. or just make the adjustment. I always talk in Eastern Standard or Eastern Daylight Saver Savings Time because uh, I'm here on the East Coast, but you can always add or subtract wherever you are in the world. Um, there's a lot of online calculators and whatever. So just know it started Monday. And, and with retrogrades, we don't have to be as pinpointed necessarily because, uh, you know, remember that they slow, you know, the planet again appears from the earth to slow down, stop, and then it starts to retrograde. So especially when we get into the outer planets where Jupiter is the beginning of that, uh, we start to realize that, you know, these planets take a little while to get going in either direction, <laughs> okay, forward or backward. And if you see me looking up and down, I am co-recording on two devices and that is why. Uh, so just so that you know. Um, so Jupiter retrograde started in Taurus and Jupiter in Taurus has been teaching us a lot of lessons. Now remember, Jupiter is our good luck, good fortune, optimism, expansion. Okay, where do we want to grow? Where do we want things to be big? I always look at Jupiter as a big time growth kind of uh, thing. Where do we want to expand, blow up, make it bigger, you know, have, have a big, happy, whatever. That's where Jupiter comes in in our chart. So wherever Jupiter is, whether it is where it is when you were born or the transiting Jupiter, we have to look at both perspectives. Um, then, then uh, that is where we want to like increase in our life and where we want to make things bigger and where we want to sort of excel and, and blow up, I guess, if, if you will, um, in a good way. Um, and so Jupiter, um, if you had Jupiter in your chart in Taurus, then you're having your Jupiter return this year. Uh, and so lucky you, because that's good luck on top of good luck. But it's still a little sticky when Jupiter goes retrograde, even though the planet of optimism, you know, you think, oh, the planet of optimism can still have a little bit of a rainy day. Um, and that's basically what happens with Jupiter retrograde. When Jupiter goes retrograde, it, it is a time of instead of expanding, which Jupiter loves to do, and we talk about expanding, but Jupiter, in fact, is the largest planet in our solar system. So that's something noteworthy, you know, um, other than the sun, which is a star, is of course the largest, uh, you know, object in our solar system, but Jupiter is the biggest planet. So Jupiter is like where we want to bl blow up and be bigger. And Jupiter in Greek mythology was actually Zeus. So when we think about this, it's like this, you know, Jupiter is like large and in charge. And so um, that's all good. But when, it, when Jupiter goes retrograde, that's when some of that expansion and that growing and that, you know, making things bigger starts to go opposite, right? So it goes into constricting a little bit. Also, I hesitate all the time to use this word with, with, um, with Jupiter because I use this word a lot with a different planet. And I want to make the distinction on this broadcast between the two. Jupiter is our goals, our big dream, our big picture. What's the deal? But so is Saturn. You might be like, well, I'm a little confused, Gretchen, right? Because you talk about Saturn being goals, goals and goals and goals and goals. Yes, Saturn is our goals for sure, 100%. But Jupiter is more like, like if you think of Saturn, Saturn is the, or is like the pragmatic, what is, is this doable? Do I have the steps? Do I have the, you know, the money, the time, the effort, the resources? Like what is the, the list, you know? Saturn is much more pragmatic when it comes to goals. And it's like, can I really attain that? I don't, I don't know. Where Jupiter is almost like the mission statement. Like I want to grow up and be happy, healthy, wealthy. Like 
Jupiter is a goal in a, like a big picture sort of way. So I love talking about Jupiter in this sort of mission statement, like, like kind of, um, what is your, where, where do you want to like kind of end up and be and like, what's your dream? What's your aspiration now? Now I just used another word that can be confusing because I use the word dreams with Neptune. <laughs> Neptune is not at all realistic. Neptune is our dreams, but that's kind of like the daydream, you know, like sort of it may or may not ever come true. Where Jupiter, I really feel is more of the mission statement of, of what do we want here? And what's the bigger picture? Saturn, he's going to do all the steps and Neptune's going to like just fantasize, like which may or may not come true. But Jupiter's kind of in the middle between uh, those two when it comes to our hopes, our goals, and our dreams. Jupiter's sort of the in-between. And I love that mission statement sort of saying, you know, of like, we have to know what the company culture is, what's the mission statement, and all those things. Um, and I think we need to have that in our life, you know, and that's Jupiter. Now, the thing is, when we're, when Jupiter goes retrograde, all of a sudden, Jupiter starts to become a little bit more practical. It's like, well, can I even, am I on the path to achieve that? I mean, I mean, is that in, you know, within reason, is that something that I could actually achieve? Um, and so it almost starts to behave maybe a little even Saturn-esque, you know, because now we're going back to the drawing board to say, am I, am I actually aligning with my mission statement? Am I actually aligning with, with like what my big picture goal for my life is and, and all that? And you know, that's where we're going to be re-evaluating. Now, Jupiter roughly is retrograde for about four-ish months. It's going to be retrograde all the way uh, from uh, September 4th, 2023, all the way until December 30th, 2023. So, so the day before um, New Year's Eve. And so we have some f time now to think about Jupiter retrograde and, and what it's trying to show us. Now, it is going to be in Taurus and Taurus is our earthly needs, <laughs> you know, kind of, uh, it is mo money, it's monetary, uh, for sure. It is our body. It's, it's our, um, you know, kind of see it, hear it, feel it, touch it, smell it. That's very Taurus. And so it's in an earth sign. And, and now we're even getting a little more practical because of where Jupiter is, um, sort of residing right now in that Taurus aspect. Taurus is also ruled by Venus, the goddess of love and beauty. So we might be thinking about beautification. We might be thinking about, um, uh, our creativity, our love life, and some things like that, because because remember, Taurus does have a little bit of a Venus flavor. Um, and so with Jupiter retrograde, it's not the worst of the retrogrades. It's just like, are we being overly optimistic? And, and the other thing is, it's too much of a good thing. So think about Jupiter of too much drink, too much food, too much shopping, too much whatever it is, too much. So this is a time to reel that back and actually kind of constrict that and sort of go, you know, I have been overindulging. Like, I, you know, I shouldn't be, you know, drinking that many sodas or whatever thing it is that you're into. It's time to kind of reel back, okay, uh, Jupiter. Now, if you are a Taurus, you're definitely going to be feeling this for sure. Um, possibly Scorpios too, because that's the opposition is Scorpio. Um, and even the other um, earth signs like uh, Virgo and Capricorn might feel this and the other fixed signs like Leo and Aquarius are going to feel this. So we have, we have a lot of people that are feeling this one. Now, again, out of all of Jupiter's a very beneficial, benevolent sort of planet. So even when Jupiter's retrograde, it's a little funky, but it's not like the end of the world. Now, a lot of people were born with Jupiter retrograde, and I want to acknowledge one of our viewers um, posed that question to me, and I, for, I was remiss on answering it, uh, but I want to answer it during my broadcast. So if you are the viewer, thank you for posing this question. Uh, this person said, what it, uh, happens if you were born with Jupiter retrograde in your chart? Does that affect you in a different way? I personally have Jupiter retrograde in my chart. A lot of people do because it happens four months every single year um, at different times during the year too. So, I mean, um, everybody's a little different. Um, but I feel like as if when you're, when you already have Jupiter retrograde and, and a planet comes and is retrograde, 
I really feel like it's very much like you're coming home. Like, eh, psh, I already do this. I do this full time. So psh, whatever. Everybody else might be like kind of feeling that a little more. But if you have the retrograde, like even if you have Mercury retrograde in your chart natally or whatever, if that retrograde's happening, then it is said that you will be feeling it. Now, there is a theory in astrology, which uh, some people believe in, some people don't. Uh, I happen to be uh, one of the ones that believes in it. But um, there's a theory that if you were born with planets in your astrological birth chart that are retrograde, that means that you have an extra life lesson around that because of a past lifetime. So if you're a person that has like a ton of retrograde planets in your chart, you might have a lot of past life stuff that you're cleaning up in this lifetime. Okay. So if you have, so a clearly, apparently I'm redoing <laughs> my Jupiter, uh, in, in, from a past life because I have a, that's one of the planets. I, I don't have many planets that are retrograde in my chart, but that is one of the ones. And so it is like a returning, like you're kind of returning to that sort of, you know, we're reviewing extra, like extra stuff. Um, but Jupiter retrograde in Taurus is definitely going to sort of, um, affect the financials. And so that's a big thing. We'll probably hear about this on the news. So when we think of Jupiter, Jupiter specifically, not just, not just, it is general finance in Taurus, but specifically, if you want to get drilled down and have it be real specific, it is definitely student loan debt, which we will hear about more on the news during this next four months. You wait and see. Um, it's travel expenses. So if you have a trip that you're planning for or like something you wanted to do, uh, this is the time to set up some kind of a uh, kind of budget or to save your money for traveling, future travel. It is uh, advertising, marketing and publishing. So anything related to that, if you have that as part of your um you know, what you do if you have a small business or something, that's going to be back to the drawing board with the advertising budget. budget. You know, that'll be something um, that will be effective. Um, and uh, did I get all of them? Let me think. Um, yeah, so I mean, even one that's lesser talked about because we don't, a lot of people don't do this anymore, but you know, it's tithing, which is um, giving, like donating a certain portion of your proceeds that you make to like a religious charity or some kind of thing where you're like 10% of what I make is going to my church or something. It's called tithing. And so that can be affected by Jupiter retrograde for sure. Now, it is a time that we can feel a little bit more charitable in general uh, because Jupiter does tend to be that way. Jupiter is is all about that and uh, making a donation or doing something like that. But remember, we just want to make sure whatever it is that we do uh, and however this is affecting you personally, because remember, everybody's got it affecting a different area. Where's Taurus in your chart? And you will know. Um then you will uh, want to be reevaluating things in that department. And so everybody's got to like, you know, have a little bit tighter purse strings or make better financial decisions or whatever it is that you're doing. And look, this could put you in a position to blow things up and make things bigger. A lot of people, when Jupiter starts to kind of do its thing, a lot of people end up making more money. Um, and Jupiter can be very good at expanding your wallet. Remember, Jupiter is bigger. It's just that we don't want to get too ahead of ourselves and we don't want to get too big for our britches and like kind of put ourselves in a financial peril situation where we're like, oh, geez, you know, this is not good. You know, I should have uh, uh, planned a little better because, because Jupiter has that tendency to to just be like, oh, screw it. We'll just do this. And then it's like, oh, gee, whoops, I didn't plan property, properly for that. And that I think Jupiter retrograde, I do think will um, help. Uh, with reeling some of that back and and kind of make it a little more conservative than than typically Jupiter is. Remember, when when we grow, it has to be expanding and contracting, expanding and contracting, expanding, contracting, expanding, and contracting, and that's kind of what Jupiter does. Okay, um, uh, metaphorically and energetically, I'm talking about uh, not literally, but I'm talking about energetically and metaphorically is it's expanding and then it contracts during the retrograde. So that's kind of the way we're supposed to think of this is like, it's not a bad thing. It's just that we're going to be reviewing, reevaluating, reassessing, like we're doing with all of the retrogrades, the REs, uh, we're doing that. 
Now, there is a benefit, uh, um, and I'm going to give you the behind the scenes. I like to teach, you guys know that during, I like to teach astrology as I'm going. I know a lot of uh, astrologers charge extra for that and whatever, but I like to share. I'm so passionate about this topic. I wish everybody knew about astrology. Um, if, I, if I help people to learn about astrology, I hope that I hope that that is something that I do for this planet and this world. That's my mission statement, my Jupiter mission, mission statement. But there's a beneficial thing that happens around retrogrades. And that is planets often make trine connections either right before the retrograde starts or right after the retrograde. So that's the benefit to having a like a planet going retrograde if you're going to look at a positive or look at an upside and that's a very jupiter thing to do is to look at the upside is that there's two trines that are going to be this week involving jupiter which is really fun and good okay the first trine is going to happen on monday on uh, so it is a little bit uh, i'm recording this on tuesday uh september 5th so this one already happened but remember it'll be active this all this whole week so on monday on Labor Day, Mercury formed a trine with Jupiter, and that was at 6.29 a.m. Eastern time. That was the peak or the height of it, but remember, it'll be active a few days before and a few days after. And so if you have to speak, orate, text, email, give a report, something in the very beginning part of this week, um, this is your this is your time to do that. And so it is gonna be a very active week, not only with Jupiter, but with Mercury too. So we have Jupiter and Mercury very active this week. And so uh, that is a positive thing. Trines are always positive. It means that each of these are in the same element. So Mercury retrograde is in Virgo right now. Jupiter retrograde is in Taurus right now. Taurus and Virgos are besties. They are, are both Earth signs. And so uh, this is a very positive thing. And again, when we're, when we're talking about Mercury, we're talking about travel, we're talking about speaking, we're talking about orating, and Mercury is our mental processes. Mercury is is like kind of like our mind and how we think of things. And so that's something that's gonna be affected uh, with Mercury going on with Jupiter. Um, and so that's Monday, but like I said, it's gonna be active Tuesday, even Wednesday, because we have another thing coming on Wednesday, which I'm gonna get back to. Wednesday is a big day this, this week um, in astrology. On Friday, I'm going to circle back to Wednesday, but on Friday, uh, on September 8th, the second trine happens where the sun forms a trine with Jupiter. Now, this is very beneficial also. Again, the sun is in Virgo and Jupiter is in Taurus. So this is a wonderful thing. Um, by the way, two planets that don't go retrograde are the sun and the moon. So uh, those, those are never retrograde, but the other ones are all retrograde. So all, or I should say all go retrograde. Um, so the sun forming a trine with Jupiter, the peak or the height of it, the pinnacle of it at 7.13 a.m. Eastern time, September 8th, 2023. And that's going to be earlier in the morning. Again, if you're on the West Coast, you know, just adjust. Uh, but this is basically what's going to be going down now. Again, that's very, very positive. One of the most positive like transits that can happen is a Jupiter trine anything transit, really. Like that's like always like super great. You're gonna see all the astrologers posting. If you guys like follow different astrology, you'll be seeing everybody, this is the time to manifest and to and to you know go forward and all that. But you gotta remember that the reason why this is happening is because Jupiter went retrograde. So Jupiter's actually in the process of doing that, like a little bit of a pulling back of the energy. Um, so it is going to be positive and it's going to have positive results. And if anything, I've, I've told you there's, there's been a few times I get on here and I talk about my broadcast about playing the lottery. I am not responsible for gambling. I'm just saying, uh, but if that is something in your wheelhouse, that would be a good day to do it is to buy a little lottery ticket or like, you know, put your name in on a raffle at work or something, whatever it is. Um, and so that is something that's beneficial and coming on Friday. But like I said, it's going to be active Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. So we have these two trines that are kind of bookending the week on Monday and Friday with Jupiter, first Mercury, and then the sun. And I think that's all going to be very, very positive and very beneficial. And I think it's, I think it's good. This is all, that's all good stuff. Okay. Just remember, uh, Jupiter makes everything a little bigger. <sighs> 
the the sort of interesting spot and I can't say if it's going to be good or bad because it's going to be a little bit kind of a mixture type thing is on Wednesday on September 6th that's a really big day for for this week there's a there's three big things happening on that day I'll I'll talk first about how there's going to be a conjunction between the sun and Mercury on that day. Now, again, Mercury is retrograde. So we have Jupiter retrograde, we have Mercury retrograde. And so we're reviewing, reassessing, reevaluating all this Virgo Mercury stuff. Um, this always happens at some point during the retrograde where the sun and Mercury, remember, remember, it looks like Mercury is going backwards in the sky. Here's the sun. Mercury was ahead of the sun. Now it's it looks like it's going backwards. It conjuncts the sun and it starts to fall behind the sun in the sky. That's how it looks to us on the planet. Um, this is always the time where the retrograde deepens. It hits this. So there's going to be a flurry of activity on Wednesday. It's going to be a busy day on Wednesday. There's going to be a lot of phone calls, emails, texts, whatever, if you still fax, fax, whatever. Um, but there's gonna be a lot of activity on around that conjunction that always happens. There's a big increase of energy. And then, and then as it dips behind the sun, it, the energy starts to trail off and, and everything sort of starts to go even more quiet. So it's interesting because that's always happens and that's like the last half of the retrograde. So I always use that as kind of a marker for when we're almost halfway done is when this when Mercury does that. Um, and so that again is going to be happening on um, on September 6th at 7.09 a.m. Eastern time is the peak of it. So again, we're going to be feeling very busy the whole beginning part of the week. We got the trine, Mercury trine Jupiter, and then Mercury conjunct the sun. So there's going to be a lot of mercurial activity going on. The other thing that's happening at the same time, speaking more of Mercury, so there's going to be even more mercurial energy happening, is that the last quarter otherwise known as the fourth quarter, otherwise known as the, the second chance full moon is going to be taking place on that day as well. Now, this is tricky because it's going to be the sun is in Virgo squaring the moon, which is going to be in Gemini. It's going to be 14 degrees Gemini. Both Virgo and Gemini are ruled by Mercury and they are both going to be squaring Mercury on that day. So, when I said I wasn't sure if it was gonna be positive or negative, this is why it's crunchy. So so the moon is forming a square to both of these. The moon is feelings. So we're gonna have a lot of talking, expressing ourselves, feelings, the feelings, blah, 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 blah. But the moon is sensitive. The moon is going, you hurt my feelings with what you said. What did you mean by that text? What did you mean by that email? What, you, you see what I'm saying? So, uh, this is a little, this could be a little crispy, crunchy, uh, right there because the moon is in Gemini and the moon is kind of, um, in Gemini, the moon is a little not focused, you know, I mean, like it's kind of all over the place. Now, if you have Virgo Gemini in your chart, you're going to be feeling this. The heart of this is going to be up in there, uh, for sure. And the, the thing about, even though they're both ruled by Mercury, they're very different. You know, we have to remember that Gemini is an air sign. That's where the moon is going to be, Gemini. But Gemini is an air sign. And then we have the sun is an earth sign in Virgo. So they're both ruled by, by Mercury, but they're very different. How they function is very different. Virgo is higher minded and intellectual and, and curious and all that, but in a more grounded, practical way, where Gemini is in a, like adventurous, a little bit more curious, like but ungrounded way. And so these two can kind of like, they're irritated with each other. Because it's like, they, it's like, what are you talking about? No, what are you talking about? But they're both talking. Nobody's listening. Nobody's listening. And that's part of communication. We have to remember that part of communication is listening. What's that old fashioned saying? You're born with two ears and only one mouth. Zip it and listen. You know, that's the more important part of it. So so there's that is going on on Wednesday. Remember, we're halfway now between the last full moon, which was that big super moon, 
and then the next new moon. We're halfway between, and, and this is a time where the farmer is clearing the fields and we're really purging, really getting rid of. We're continuing the work from that last full moon where we're purging, getting rid of, uh, you know, eliminating something. And so maybe we need to eliminate a lot of the words and go bullet point on this thing. I don't know. So there's that going on. So all of this is happening. And by the way, I did miss something and I'm going to, I'm going to talk about, uh, that remember when I was giving that list of, of financial things with Jupiter, one of the things I missed was legal. There could be legal expenses. So if you have any legal things going on, this could be a week where you hear a lot about that or there's going to be a little bit of mm, fighting or custody hearings or whatever thing. There is there is a legal because Jupiter is associated with legal expenses. Uh, so there could be a monetary or even just talking about legal things with all this Mercury and even Jupiter. See, Mercury can be um, positive talk but it can also be debates and it can also be arguments and it can also be cutting words, you know, and, and things like that. And we have to watch because the moon is squaring Mercury on Wednesday. Now it's just on Wednesday, but remember this Mercury sun conjunctions longer than Wednesday. It'll last for a few days. And behind the scenes, there's another thing going on, which is also coming to a peak or a height on Wednesday. But this thing has been going on for a week or two and will continue to go on until all the way until uh, September 12th. And that's Lilith, Black Moon Lilith, and you guys have heard me talk about her, is gonna form a trine with the North Node of the Moon. Now we're getting fire sign energy involved. So this is a lot, this is a lot. All on Wednesday is coming to a peak. Lilith forming a trine, remember we just talked about trine means the same element. So, so Lilith is in Leo, North node of the moon is in Aries now. And so Aries and Leo are going to be affected. Now it's a trine. Remember, trines are positive. Remember what I always say. Look at the players. Look at the players. Lilith is a, <laughs> I call her a B word. Just saying, I do. Um, so she's the raw, untamed goddess that, you know, some, some people portray her as a demon. I mean, you know, she can be, she can be, and she's forming a trine with the North node. Now, the cool thing about this, because this could be good in an aspect that Lilith is uncompromisingly herself. Like Lilith gives two rats behinds what anybody thinks of her. Oh, you want to call me a demon? You want to call me a B word? You want to call me whatever? I don't care. Like she's really in your face. She's, she's like, very raw, very animalistic, very primal. Um, and that's Lilith. And when she forms a trine with the North Node of the Moon, the North Node of the Moon is our destiny, where we're meant to be, what we're meant to do. This is saying, who cares? Give, you know, tell people, whoever, whatever, you got to be authentically, unabashedly you. You have to be you, boo. You have to do your thing. You have to, this is your life, you know, according to some people, we only have one life, but we know that's not true. But, you know, this is your life. So, so be you, boo, unabashedly, unapologetically you. And Lilith doesn't compromise. I mean, she really doesn't. She just does whatever she wants. So there's this wild, untamed, we can't control it energy that's going on behind the scenes between all of these things that are happening we got lilith involved and whenever we think of lilith you got to think of lilith like a caged animal like she she will do whatever she needs to do like lilith does not care and so this could really help if you are like you know an artist or you're like wanting to do something that's kind of other people might say is wild and crazy and you know, this is about just being you and taking that chance because remember Jupiter is the big mission statement. Like what is our life purpose? What do we want from our life? What, you know, and maybe, listen, maybe it's simple. I mean, you know, not everybody wants to be like Steve Jobs or Richard Branson or, you know, I don't know, Amelia Earhart or whoever, like, you know, not everybody has these big dreams and goals, so maybe your big dream and goal is to have like a big, happy, healthy family or, or, you know, whatever it is, but, but the North node, the moon being mixed in and also Jupiter too, like, this is like, 
like returning to what are we doing here? What's our big picture mission statement? You know, maybe it's just to be happy, healthy, and wise. I don't know, like whatever it is, definitely Jupiter's wisdom uh, and schooling and education and expanding our minds. You know, maybe, maybe it's to grow. Maybe it's to, you know, just whatever that big picture is. Lilith is saying, you got to be you boo and you got to go for it. And who cares? Who cares what anybody says? She didn't care what anybody said. That was like her mythology, um, in, uh, in, uh, in mythology. So, you know, who cares? Who cares what, what anybody else might say? Um, and as long as it's obviously legal and you know, we want to abide by, you know, some human laws, of course, but, but other than that, she's like, go for it. So this can help us. And by the way, again, this has been active for like the last week or so, and it's going to continue to be active until roughly September 12th. But the peak of that one is going to be on Wednesday at 534 PM Eastern time. So earlier than that, if you're on the West Coast, and that's happening in the middle of all this sun conjunct Mercury, second chance full moon, aka the last quarter lunar cycle. And then we have Lilith trine the north node of the moon. Now fire signs, woo, you're going to be feeling that one for sure. Sagittarius is too. Leo, Aries, Sag. Uh, and it depends on where the north node of the moon is. But this is reminding us to stay true to what we want to do and to remember Jupiter is remember the big picture. So yeah, so there's a lot going on now. And then we do have, like I said, Venus has turned direct. So things might feel a little funkalicious with our love life too, um, because it has to get back on track. We have to get back into alignment. Like, woo, we just been through some stuff. It's kind of like when a couple has an argument and then it's like, where do we go from here? I don't know. Like, how do we reintegrate? That's kind of like what we're doing. Or maybe you're just having some self-assessment and self-awareness. Like if you're single, like what are you looking for in a love partner and all that? So we have a lot going on this week um, in astrology. Uh, otherwise, those days in between are kind of a little bit... Um, not as volatile, uh, but remember, all of these have big bubbles around them, so you'll be feeling it the day before, the day after, and all that. Now, I always pull a card. What do we need to know for this week? Um, uh, in and like to help us with all this stuff going on. There's a lot of stuff going on. What do we need to know about all this? What's the most important thing for our angels, our spirit guides, and our guardians? Oh, I felt like one was trying to get into my hand there. Um, oh, that's, that's beautiful. After I was just talking about Lilith, this is beautiful. Deserving. We deserve. That's right. Heck yes. You, like all of God's children, or you could say all of the universe's children, deserve happiness, health, and love. Yeah. And so sometimes these retrogrades, we're just reevaluating that stuff. Like, am I, I've been talking a lot about that in my sessions, like, what are you getting out of this? Like, you know, a lot of people that come to me are so wonderful and sensitive and kind and generous and giving and caring. And they're talking about, am I giving enough? Am I giving enough? Maybe I should do more. Maybe I should do more. And a lot of times I'm like, wait a minute, what are you getting? Like, are you getting any benefit from this? If not, psh. I mean, I love Saturn retrograde because Saturn retrograde is kind of like, I don't love it as much as Neptune retrograde, but I do like Saturn retrograde because we are kind of like figuring out, is this a time waster or am I wasting my energy, effort and resource? And so this is saying we deserve more. If you're not getting the big picture things that you want here in your life, uh, you deserve, you deserve it. And to step into your destiny, to step into, uh, where you've been growing, you know, Jupiter is going to help us if we grew too fast, too soon, that can sometimes be as much of a problem as not growing fast enough. So growth issues are coming into play here this week, especially with Jupiter retrograde. Um, but yeah, it is saying you deserve. And, and a lot of people need to up that. I get a lot of clients I talk to that need to really remember that they deserve more, that they deserve more growth and health and wealth and love and all that kind of stuff, not less. A lot of people think, well, should I reel it back? And should I? No, no. <laughs> no, you know, obviously you want to be realistic that we do have human laws. We have physical earthly laws and we have things like that. Like, uh, you know, we can't be 95 necessarily enjoying the NFL. That's not going to happen. Uh, we have to, you know, we have to abide by certain laws and rules, but 
but when it that's Saturn's job for sure. Um, but when we talk about Jupiter, Jupiter is where did we expand too much and how can we how can we grow in a more healthy um, sort of good pace that doesn't stress everybody out, you know, because remember going too fast, too strong, too big all at once can be too much. So that's what Jupiter retrograde is all about. Hope that helped everybody. If you guys want a personalized astrological session with me, please feel free to send me a DM or a text message and like my video. Make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel because it will uh, notify you when I post videos like this, when I'm not doing a live. And uh, yeah, I appreciate you guys. You guys are awesome. And make sure you comment below your astrological sign, where you're tuning in from and all that. I love to hear. So hope you guys are well. Bye.